From the very beginning, the Back 40 project has been about learning, about the land, animals, and hunting, and then passing those lessons on to others. For that reason, the National Deer Association was the perfect partner to help us continue this mission and steward the farm into the future. With that in mind, I recently invited Nick Pinizzotto and Hank Forrester, both from the NDA, to join me in Michigan for a tour of their new property, to hunt some does, and to learn more about their plan to use the Back 40 to educate new hunters through their Field to Fork program. It's a beautiful place. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, that's what I thought. One of the things I liked about it was it, in a lot of ways, it had, it had something to start with. It had the anchoring swamp and cover to start with. Mm -hmm. But then I had these old fields that were a little bit like a blank canvas. And I saw there wasn't a lot to them yet, but with that edge, with that starting point, you could paint whatever picture you wanted. Yeah. And I was mm -hmm. really excited about the possibilities. And, you know, we only just scratched the surface with those this past year. But... I mean, with the expertise you guys have, I'm sure you could really take it to the next level. Well, you're off to a heck of a start, and you brought <laughs> in a lot of experts, and, yeah. uh, you know, I don't, I don't know that we're any more expert than a lot of the people you brought in. I think that that's the future of this place, is to continue to get outside expertise and continue yeah. to, the painting that you started, you know, where do we take it from here? So that's the exciting part yeah. of this. And how, and how many new hunters do we potentially create here? I mean, that's, that's what I'm excited about. Yeah, me too. I think the other thing too is it's it's not even necessarily about how many people we put through here. It's how we capture those moments. Yeah. And that's why working with you guys gets us so excited. Yeah. Can we do, you know, a first class event here, capture it, and then show other people right. hey, you can do this in, you know, Keokuk, Iowa, or you yeah. can do this in, you know, somewhere mm -hmm. in Can anywhere. Yep. That you can do this. And it, so the back forty it's a place as we see it, but it's also, as you mentioned, that canvas. So we look at, I would say, use the same thing for how we're gonna mm -hmm. deploy field to fork across the country. We can't go out and do all the field to forks, yeah. but if we can inspire other people to do them, then we're on to something, I think. This is where the very first deer killed on the back 40 happened. And these tower blinds are really great. I think they'll be terrific. The further you go this way, it widens significant. This plot, I think, is almost two acres. Make this, thicken it up a little bit. I added the food plot in there. I was hoping to have some of these deer would cut the corner here. <laughs> right here, it starts to get really brushy, and there's some more bedding on this area. Deer coming in and out, in and out. Now that the guys have the lay of the land, it's time to hunt. I'm thinking. Nick, if you and I sit together, um, I guess I don't know where we, we could sit two, one or two places. We could sit the tower blind that's near the honey hole, um, and that's, that's overlooking a small food plot right in front of you, and the great bedding right in front, um, and then the largest food plot is about 100, 100 yards away or so. Uh, so that's a really good spot, and then the other spot that would be good for this wind would be the tower blind where my dad shot his buck. Okay. Um, I think there's a great chance that does could show up at either one because that one's by all those other bedding features I, I mentioned and then there's that food plot there as well. Um, and interestingly both both of those are kind of in the middle of a travel line that a lot of deer would take to get to neighboring ag fields. So there's a cut corn field that would be closest to that one. There's a cut bean field on the back side closest to the honey hole okay. plot. You have, a, you have a preference Hank? What about rock, paper, scissors? I've been trying to get people to do rock, paper, scissors oh, yeah. on the show all, right. all is, season. Is it one, two, no three, shoot? Right. One, two, three, boom. <laughs> yeah, one, two, three, boom. All Best right. out of three. Best out of three? Best out of three. Best one, two, three, three, boom. And whoever wins gets the honey hole stand. All right. All right. <laughs> one, two, three, <laughs> boom. You won that one. One, two, three, boom. Oh. One, two, three, boom. Oh, Hank gets the spot. You get the honey hole. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All right, Hank, pressure's on. So we took two bucks out here so far this year and one doe. But anecdotally, I feel like we have a, a decent enough doe population in which we should be taking a handful. So with the one we've already taken, if we took another two or three over the next couple days, um, I think that'd be a good thing. So that's what I'm hoping to do. 
Yeah. If we can get a couple off, I think uh, fill the freezer a little bit more, finish off on the management on the back 40, and we can call it a year. Looking forward to it. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. To the road. <laughs> sense of pressure <laughs> and shoot this is my last time not being the guest uh, that's a good point so I will be a guest from here on out whenever I return I which is a weird feeling I don't think <laughs> we'll ever consider you a guest but I know what you're saying I'm gonna be like that old second uncle that everybody has that keeps showing up for family gatherings <laughs> they don't really know who is he yeah he used to do something but he's just always here no one really knows what he does yeah yeah just be lurking at all future events here. <laughs> how do you how do you see new hunter mentorship and recruiting fitting into that? Because it seems like from, from the outside looking in, it seems like that's something you guys have really prioritized with the field the fork program that you know was part of QDMA and now you guys seem to be continuing to focus there and, and other things too. Why does that fits so clearly into that mission in your view. So some people might say, why does it matter? Why do you care if there are more people out doing this? Well, deer hunters are seven out of every ten people that hunt are deer hunters. And when you look at the pot of money that comes for all wildlife conservation, the part of it that comes from hunting largely comes from people who hunt deer. Whether it's money we spend on firearms and ammunition or an often overlooked one conservation groups that have branches like we do, the conservation they put on the ground. We want more deer hunters. And, you know, we have, we have to also control populations. We have things like chronic wasting disease that thrive in situations where we have too many deer. Yeah. We want people to have more of an understanding of hunting. And deer hunting is a good way to do that because chances are everybody's interacted with a deer. Yeah. You've either hit one with your vehicle or you've seen one eat your flower garden. Mm -hmm. We want people who may never be in a deer blind like we are tonight to still potentially join our organization because they care about deer mm. and they care about conservation because in my view there's no bigger conservation animal than deer yeah yeah we've got a pretty special thing that we lucked into being born in this place with family or friends that point us in this direction and more deer coming up the bottom okay a whole bunch of them. Time to get serious. Time to get serious. Two, three, four, five. They're heading up that low spot. Yeah. Yep. Can you get a range for me? Uh, yeah. This should be about a hundred right there. Yep. If we can, let's let them get all the way into the foods. Yeah. Yes. We might have to re-identify her. I think she's the fourth one now. Yeah, the one that's by the tall yellow grass. Yeah. That's the biggest one. The furthest one back. Yeah. In the far back. Yeah. Yeah, the one. Heading away. Yeah. She's quartered away right now. Are you on her? Far yellow grass. Yeah, the farthest yeah. one. Yeah, I'm walking away. Got it. Got it. Did I miss? No, nope, you got her. Just stand another. Nice job. Yeah. I got, into, I got into the business end of it too, why did you? Yeah. It's okay to be excited. We gotta enjoy it. Good shot. Thank it you. looked like a perfect shot. Did it? Yeah. She just turned and took a, she ran over the hill, but it looked, uh, it looked good to me. Man, I still, I still get excited. I'm shaking. <laughs> I might get more excited than you are.
Perfect shot. She's gonna drop right there. Good job. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I don't think we have to whisper anymore. No, we're done. <laughs> Way to go, man. Great shot. Oof. Man. She made us work on that, that one. That was intense. Yeah. They wanted to circle down the room. Yeah. They they're smart deer. <sighs> Two years ago, could you have ever imagined a night where three of us would be out here and no. possibly fill three tags? No. Last year, completely different story. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how little, little work like that can change things? Well, <sighs> shall we get down while we have some daylight? Yeah, we might as well. <sighs> Beautiful. She didn't feel much here. It's yeah, perfect. You couldn't rest. Do any of us have to get up? Nope. <laughs> We're Congratulations. sleeping. Congratulations. Heck of a night, huh? I didn't know you could triple. You know? We just figured it out. I'll tell you, we're saying in the blind that one year ago, this would not have been possible. We came out here last year in December and couldn't kill a single doe, let alone three in the matter of one sit. Your labor here has certainly paid off. It's obvious. It's feeling that way tonight. It definitely feels good. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to end the season. Hard to do it any better than this. Let's go get the can in and pick up these deer and get to work. someone who hasn't heard about it. If you were in an elevator with them and you had 30 seconds to get to the next floor and you had to explain to them what Field of Fork is, how do you do that? What would you tell them? Field of Fork is a, uh, it's a mentored hunting program for adults that focuses on food. And we set up a table at the farmer's market and um, asked people if they wanted to try venison. And then as we continued that dialogue, uh, we offered them an opportunity to sign up for a class to learn to hunt. I think what you guys do better than, or what this program has done better than most maybe, is that you are not just creating hunters, but you're creating relationships through the system you have. That is not this pairing of one person with a kid for one day and they go out. Instead it's finding people, adults, who already have this latent interest, pairing them with a mentor, having both of these people go through these educational events together. So you're providing the education, but then you're also providing the opportunity for these mentorship relationships to grow. And then you foster that around a weekend, and it seems like better than many other programs like this I've seen, these relationships stick. So Nick, five years from now, let's say, when you look back on this thing that we're starting now here today, what does success look like? What do you think that'll be? What are you hoping to see at that point? I think success is we've maximized the opportunity that the back 40's afforded us by not bringing thousands of people here to hunt the back 40, 
but by being able to show them other hunters for the first time using it and using that as a sort of a roadmap for people all across the country to put on their own Back 40 events. I think that's how we get to scale and I think the Back 40 will give us that give us that opportunity. Yeah, it's that ultimate example to inspire other people, educate other people. And it's perfect because it's so in line with what we've tried to do with this first phase, which has been the land and animals. And, and, and now the second phase is how do you share that with other people? Yeah. Not often in life do you have a chance to do something that actually matters around something you love so much. And this is certainly one of those opportunities. Yeah. I mean, that's beautifully said and I, I agree. While our ownership of the Back 40 has come to an end, our work there has not. Over the coming year, we'll be collaborating with the NDA to participate in and document several new hunter educational events on the property, including another mentored hunt. And you can hear all about that on the Wired Hunt podcast all throughout 2021. In celebration of this next chapter, we're launching the Back 40 to Fork giveaway, in which we're going to give away everything from a first light kit to a Mediator Edition Weatherby Vanguard rifle, new Vortex optics, a Benchmade Meat Crafter knife, and a lot more. And on top of that, in the spirit of mentorship, each winner is going to have the opportunity to nominate a new hunter to receive a special new hunter gift package. So head on over to themeateater.com slash fork to sign up and learn more.